Hey, welcome to another video for our C Sharp class. We're in the unit right now called Recursion. And the problem that we're about to solve now is called Knight's Tour. So I have the Wikipedia page up for Knight's Tour so we can explain what a knight is and what the whole puzzle is. So you remember in a chess game, the knight is the square is the piece that moves in an L shape. It moves two squares up and one square over, or one over and two up. And so you can see here in the uh, the challenge, the idea is to take a knight and put it on as a, as a alone on, a, on an empty chessboard. And then the goal is to move around the board, visiting each square only one time. And so in this gray box up here in the corner, you can see a pathway that seems to work. As it visits each square, they turn gray, and legally it can be done. However, it is not an automatic thing. It is something that has to be uh, either figured out or done by trial and error. So this problem uh, lends itself very well to a recursive solution. So you think of how many dead ends there are as you would possibly uh, run into a place where you cannot make a legal move. Uh, so, so we're going to have to use a solution that will do some recursion. So in the next square down, you can see that a 5x5 board is possible. The 8x8 board is possible. So you can see that as we scroll through the page, the, this is an old problem. It comes from the 9th century. It looks like they have uh, come up with a solution here. There's other solutions. And uh, there are even bigger boards. So you can see that uh, a 24x24 24 board has been solved and a 130x130 square. So we're going to talk about Warnsdorf rule, Warnsdorf's rule after, uh, after we get done with our uh, first solution. But we're going to simply do a brute force attack. We're going to pick a spot and try all possible directions and see if we can get a possible uh, solution. So let's get into our C-sharp coding, and we're going to create a project called Knight's Tour. So our project will start off with two variables. And so they have to be static because they're in this console app. We're going to have a board size. We'll set it to eight, which is the standard chessboard size. And the total attempted moves will start off at zero. Next, I'm going to create two arrays. One's called X move, and the other one is Y move. These will be an array of eight possible locations where the next knight can move. So now that I've got the arrays listed here, I'm going to put in some values. So you know that the knight can move in a L-shaped pattern. So one possibility is it could move two squares upwards, or let's see, this is the X move. So it could move two to the right and one square down. What are the other possibilities? Well, it could move down, it could move over one and it could move down two. So let's go through and figure out all the different possibilities. So as I go through the... Um, moves, I think of all the possibilities I could do uh, to the right two, down one, to the right two, up two, I'm sorry, up one. And so when we get done here, we'll have eight different combinations of all possible knight moves. Now, not all of these will be legal. Some will fall off the edge of the board, and so we'll have to check for that. But uh, we've done that in our previous exercise where we calculated safe moves. Next, we're going to come up with a 2D grid. So this will represent every square on the board. And the only thing we have to worry about on the board is an integer. So we will set the values of the board to be um, either a negative one, which means it hasn't been visited yet, or we will put the uh, attempted move number on it. So we will keep track of which move was made in each square. All right, so let's get into the main program. I'm going to just put in a function called solve KT, which is solve Knight's Tour, and then do a console read line. So that's the essence of our program. Now we have to spend all the time working on solve KT. So I'm going to put some comments in here to kind of outline how our solution is going to work. First of all, we're going to initialize all squares on the board to the status of not visited. So I'm going to set each square to be a negative one for not visited. Then we're going to initialize a starting point and set the number of moves that we've tried to zero. Then the third part is the recursive part. 
we're going to try all possible legal moves. And so we're going to use the variables that are in our X move and Y move arrays. And so we're going to try going through the list of each of those. And if we find a back if we find a dead end where there's no solutions, then we will return a um, like a false value for our solve solution, and we'll backtrack on anything that doesn't work out. So if we're going to initialize all the squares on the board, we're going to need a double nested for loop. So we'll do a for loop from uh, zero to board size for the columns, and then zero to board size for the rows. Each, each cell on the board will be set to a negative one, which in our case is going to be interpreted as not visited. So now we'll initialize the starting points. So I'm going to make a variable called um, start x and start y. And this will be set to any number on the board you like. So I'm going to set 0, 4 as my initial starting point. Now the board grid has to have um, its first value. So move number 0 is at this uh, location, 0, 4. And so we'll set this, the value of the cell to 0. And then we'll reset the attempted moves to the number 0. So I'm going to invent a new function called solve kt utility, or util. And it will be the recursive function. So it will take the starting value and the move number, which is 1. And if it goes through the entire recursive process and comes back with no solution, like you can see the exclamation mark is a false value, so if, if, if this comes back as false, then we'll say there's no solution found. So we're going to try to eliminate all possibilities before we can say there's no solution. All right, so what if there is a solution? Well, let's print the board. So we'll have to invent another function called print board, and we'll send it the grid, and it'll just print out all the squares. Then we'll tell it uh, the user how many use how many attempts we had to create or uh, uh, to move to be able to figure out the solution. All right, so now it's time to begin with our recursive coding here. So the function that I'm calling recursion, recursive is, uh, is called solve kt utility, and it's going to accept two parameters: the current x value, the current y value, and the number of moves that have been done. So we'll call it move count. So the first thing I'm going to do is create um, just a little counter to keep track of how much progress we've made. This is a slow process. So I'm going to um, add one to the attempted moves every time we call this function. And then I'm going to print how many moves it has done so far. But I only want to print it every once in a while. So I'm going to choose every million attempts we will update the user. So we'll do a, a div... Um, div function here that says uh, if we get a remainder of zero and divide by a, a million then we will print out uh, an update. Next I'm going to create a new variable called k. It's just a counter and this will be used to move through all of the possible knight uh, moves, the L shapes. So the next x and the next y arrays are what we're going to attempt to uh, uh, move on each time. So the arrays that we're going to be cycling through are next x and next y, which we defined further up on the page. So this function is going to be calling itself. And so the next time it calls itself, I'm going to send it the, um, the next possible attempt on the board. So that's each, each board attempt is, a, is an xy location. So we'll call it x, ne next x and next y. So now I'm going to check to see if the current move count is equal to the number of squares on the board. So the number of squares on the board is the board size, which is the length, times the width, which is also board size. And so if we have found all of the moves, then we can return a true value for the function, which means there's a function that exists. We found it. So the next part of my solution is I'm going to cycle through all of the possible next moves for the knight. So we're going to attempt each direction that the knight can move. All right, so this is going to work with a uh, for loop counter k. And we are going to uh, move through the arrays of the possible next moves. So let's say that we have the current value x, 
and then we're going to add to it the next possible legal move. So we're going to use the array called X move and Y move. So just to recall where these come from, if we scroll to the top, X move and Y move are all the possible X, Y combinations of where the knight can go. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do before I start checking uh, if a square is, uh, or I can move to it, is to see if the square is on the board. So I'm going to invent a function called safe square. I'm just going to send it uh, the X and Y coordinate, and then we'll check to see if that's on the board. So let's uh, invent the safe square function right now. So let's uh, move down a couple of brackets. I want to make sure that I'm at this level here where bool is the uh, solve KT, and right on the next line down, I'm going to create a Boolean for a safe square. So, so in this function, I'm going to give it an X value and a Y value, the coordinates, and I'm going to return a value, true or false, based on whether this square is on the board and has it been um, visited or not. So I'll put the comments in that says uh, what we're going to do. We're going to check to see if X comma Y is on the board. We don't want any out of bounds errors. Then the second is we're going to check to see if the square has been visited or not. So if we want to check to see if the x value is in range, we need to know that if it is, yes, it is between 0 and it is less than the size of the board. So if our board size is 8, a valid x value could be between 0 and 7. The third and fourth conditions that we want to check to see are, is the y value also between 0 and and is it less than the board size? The last condition that we should check is to see is the board grid, uh, is this square set to negative 1? Remember, negative 1 means the square has not been visited yet. If it's anything besides negative 1, it means that square has already been taken, and we're not going to allow the knight to hop there twice. So since we have an if condition, we can check if, it's, if this is all true, then we'll return true. If it's all false, then we will return false. So if any one of those five conditions fails, uh, the square is not safe to move to. Now, if you look at this uh, statement, you could see that we could reduce it. So instead of returning a true false, which, which is not a problem here, we can just put up here the return value of the whole function's evaluation and then delete the other functions. So we have ourselves a single line function now. All right, so now we have a way to check to see if the square is safe. Let's return back up to our function here on solving the board. So the first thing we want to do is if we have found a safe square to move to, let us set the value of that cell to be the current move count. So next x, next y are the coordinates. Move count is the value of the cell. So the next level deeper is to say, let's go ahead and do a solve the... Uh, Knight's tour utility function. We'll call it using the next x, next y coordinates, and then increment the move count by 1. If this comes back as a true statement, it means we found a path, then we'll return true to the uh, parent. However, if we find that there's a dead end, we're going to backtrack. So we'll take, the, uh, we'll take back our assignment. So earlier we set board grid uh, the cell to... Uh, the move count. Well, if, if this turns out to be a dead end, which gives us a false return, then we can say, well, let's, let's just set this to zero, I mean, to negative one, and so we'll not visit that square. Also, we can look here and see a little bit of advantage of uh, some, another trick. We don't need curly braces for every single one of our uh, lines. So since there's a single line inside the curly braces, those braces are optional. So I'm going to shorten this by deleting a few curly braces. It's just a little easier to keep the code clean. All right, let's go look through our code. I think there was something we left unfinished. There was a function up here on line 52 called printboard. So printboard needs to be done, which uh, we can do down here at the bottom. So printboard is going to take one argument. It's going to take a grid of integers, and we'll call it board to print. So we will go through each row and each column. Once more, we'll use uh, nested for loops. The for loops are going to go from 0 to the size of the board. And we'll use i and j for counters. 
and each cell then i comma j will be printed with its value and then also a space. After the j loop is finished we want to be able to print a new line. So that will just start a new row. One more thing that will help this, uh, if I'm going to add a space, I want to add an extra space if the number is less than 10. So that'll just make our board a little print a little better if, um, if the numbers all align. All right, so let's give this a try. I don't see any coding errors, so let's run it and see what happens. All right, looks like it's up and running. So we have attempted up to, uh, looks like we're up to 4 million, 5 million. This might run a while, so let's, let's let it go, but I'm pretty sure that there is a really, really long solution here. So what is that? We're up to 100 million already. So I'm going to stop the program and try a different starting square. So I know from previous experience that 0, 4 doesn't seem to work. Let's try 0, 0. That's the top left corner, and we'll try it again. All right, so this one jumped right to the conclusion. It found a solution, and it took even less than a million moves. So try different locations to start your board and see which ones work out and which ones don't. So it looks to me like if I start at uh, 0, 4, this seems to work. So we found a solution in uh, almost a million moves. So the way to interpret the numbers here are the squares that were visited first. So this one here says at uh, column 0, row 5, we have move number one or 0. And then we move down 2 and over 1. That gave us the first move. We went over 2, down 1. That was another. Let's see, where was the next one? So that's 2. And the 3 hops over to here. Where does 4 go? 4 is in the corner. 5 goes up. And so this is the solution, just by going by brute force. So the uh, start x and uh, start y does make a big difference in how your solution is, is resolved. Now we're going to go back and do some more work with another algorithm called the Warnsdorf uh, algorithm, and it'll make an improvement on our solution. But for right now, we've got ourselves a working version of Knight's Tour.